September the 15th is a very significant date for me because it was on this day in 1955 that I arrived in California and I conceived the desire and the hope, the ambition to see if it would be possible that at least some of this monastery could be restored at Vina. We're a school of charity. It comes down to, to that. In other words, if it's a school that makes all the monks students of learning how to love, we find ourselves more and more developing or embracing the simplicity that is God. And that's what the name monk actually means anyway, from a Greek word monos meaning one or, or simple, united, into, integrated. I remember in 1955 when the monks came to Vina, and as a little girl, I was frightened because these men didn't talk. They wore dresses from my perspective. There was one monk each day that would ride a fat tire bicycle with a basket in the front, and he would ride his bicycle over to the post office. We climbed on the roof to watch him, and it was, we were just curious. I had been told that they were coming. We tried to talk to them, but of course they couldn't talk to us. The oldest monk was 50 years old at the day of the foundation. The second oldest was 49. I was in my 20s, as, as most of us were. I always wanted to be a priest. In those days, it was called grade school. We had the Benedictine sisters from Ferdinand, Indiana teaching. So I grew up at a very young age being acquainted with St. Benedict and monastic life. Uh, I was asked to come to California. I really didn't care to come to California, so I said no, thinking I could talk the abbot out of it. I had just had a course at Gethsemane on Cistercian architecture by Father Thomas Merton. We called him Father Lewis in those days. So I knew the value of Cistercian architecture. I knew right away this was an important piece of architecture that should not be in San Francisco and needed to be in a Cistercian monastery. I made the first contact in 1973, I think it was, and it was a kind of on-again, off-again situation. It was in September, I was loading trucks, and I noticed this helicopter floating around. About the next day, maybe two days later, I was in my office and the phone rings, and here was Al Wilsey. It was always a part of our talk. He was very interested in the progress and these wonderful men. He was really inspired by what was able to be done in a relatively short period of time, but to create something just beautiful that'll be there forever. Dr. Margaret Burke had drawn by hand, this is before computers, every stone she found that belonged to the chapter house. There are certain stones that are called Springer stones. These are the beginning of the curvature of the vaulting and the arches. And as her study revealed, she was able to locate all of the Springer stones, which meant that some of the essential parts were uh, available. The stones arrived in uh, 1994, groundbreaking in 2003, and we consecrated the church in 2018. To me, it was about the work of God and our call to preserve a Cistercian monastery that lay in ruins and to bring it back to life. When we do, say, build, we build for a thousand years. We plant our roots deep in the place where we live. I like to think that, that other people would have that, that same sort of awe about how this happened, where it came from, why does it keep going, why is it important, why does God keep sending these men to this kind of a life. It just makes sense to me to continue to support that calling because the monks do a lot of things that we are not called to do on a daily basis. I look at it and I wonder, it's a miracle that it's there. And to think that such a magnificent structure ended up in a town called Vina is, is even more remarkable. 
it certainly has determined my life. I mean, the day I left Gethsemane and landed in California, it was like meeting uh, a person who's going to, or a thing that's going to really shape my life. And when I entered Kentucky, the monastery of Gethsemane, I thought it was cloistered. This is pre-Vatican II. I thought I'll be there for the rest of my life. Well, I was only there for four and a half years. <laughs> So my life unfolded in avenues I never, never, ever dreamed of. So the importance of our spirituality is that through these means, we can create a building that will of itself speak of something transcendent.